Learn from the mistakes, the other people. No matter how smart you are, you will encounter these mistakes. You learn from mistakes not because you will be able to avoid mistakes. You will able to, when these mistakes come, this suffer comes, you know how to deal with it. How to face it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And uh, my name is Abdul. If you are new here, I am a third year medical student studying internationally at the University College Dublin here in Ireland. And uh, I just wrote my step one, uh, USMLE step one last week. So I thought I'd make a little video. I've had a couple days to really recover and recuperate and just been thinking about what I could have done differently. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's going to be a quick video. It's going to be off the cuff. I haven't, I've made a couple points that I'm going to be referring to here. This video will be valuable to you, especially if you're studying here in Ireland. And uh, hopefully you can learn from my experience. And I wish this was a video that I could have watched um, back in the day. So the first thing I'd say is don't make the mistake of watching too many YouTube videos. Ironically, right away, um, it's a really easy mistake to make. But please make this video. If you're studying for step, you want to do step, make this video or I'm going to link video. It's 10 minutes. Make it that video. The last video that you watch regarding step one preparation for at least two to four weeks what ends up happening is that you you plan to make a plan and you know that's just another form of procrastination like most things in life you just need to get to it you just need to put in the work it just comes down to execution like you're smart you're preparing for the step one you're smart you've made it this far you probably have some kind of gut intuition as to what you should be doing follow that intuition try stuff Treat it like an experiment, throw stuff on the wall and figure out, you know, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. You only figure that part out when you start doing things, um, not watching things. So I hope I didn't, <laughs> you're about to cancel out of the video like right now. You're like, let's get, okay, let's get to work. But I hope you can hear me out on the couple other uh, suggestions I had for you. So the second thing that I'd say what I didn't do was I didn't write this exam in August. I should have written it in August and I didn't and I kept moving it back. I moved it to October and then I moved it finally to January and I think that was a huge downside. I wish I had just like you're supposed to do it in August. There's a huge benefit to doing that first of all that you free yourself up for this third year. Third year is not easy like it's not like a walk in the park. You're going to clinicals, you're going to rotations you know, it's difficult and managing studying for step, that's preclinical stuff really. It just doesn't make sense. And you're gonna feel like you're out of the loop on these rotations. I feel like if I had just put in a quarter of the effort that I put into step into my actual rotation, I'd be stellar on the wards. I'd be I'd be enjoying them more, I'd be able to take more advantage of the opportunities to work with doctors now that you're in your clinical years. So don't move the exam, really commit to it. I think do everything in your power. I mean, I can't emphasize it enough. I wish I had more words to say, please, please, please do this exam in August, latest September and get it over with. I feel like if you give it six months and you use the right study strategy and you actually try to do this exam, it will work and you will pass and it's going to be like any other exam you've done. It's Jan 30th right now gives you at least five months until July or six months until August. So if you're watching this right now, it's the perfect time um, to start. So that's the first mistake. I mean, the second mistake was uh, not doing this thing in August. And one other thing um, it would help you in is that the US electives open up in January and the university like my UCD at least is looking at who has done the exam and who has passed and i told them that hey i'm doing this exam in january 25th but it didn't really matter because bro everybody has already the people that have done the exam and that have passed or there's at least you know they there there's enough of them to fill up the spots why do they need to wait for me to complete my exam and you know and they're gonna see whether i passed or not and then give me an elective no if you are ready for the opportunity um us electives a lot of them are 
looking to to do an elective there you need to have step one done and rightfully so so if you get it done earlier you are more prepared to do a u.s elective and the school will choose you to do it the u.s elective third thing i didn't narrow down my resources enough in the beginning i uh, bounced around boards and beyond osmosis and well, pathoma and all of this other stuff and amboss and the only thing i was consistent with was uh u world i finished 95 percent of the q bank might be the biggest achievement of my life but you want to just pick one or two things that you like and focus on them and try mastering them because when you are jumping around resources i find personally that my mind doesn't have any kind of reference to oh okay like my mind is like if i try recalling something it starts pulling up like four different resources but no if you sh you're when you try recalling something it should pull up a page in one textbook that you've read completely now that could, you should definitely complete patoma i won't even count patoma as like a resource that you know is extraneous like patoma is a small resource you can complete that in a day but for example if you try completing all the boards and beyond on top of patoma on top of u world on top of enki bro you can't do all that so just focus a pick one and dive very deep and master it and become like an expert in that resource and i think that's something that i didn't do earlier i near the end i was focused on completely on u world i was focused completely on patoma i was focused completely on um three resources because you don't have time for anything else to be honest start doing questions early and start doing questions often um again these are not people are often scared to do questions i have this conversation i feel like i'm having this conversation every three days questions are not enemies you don't need to use them as an assessment tool when you do questions the only way to do them is when you don't give a shit about whether you get it right or wrong and you just use it as a learning tool that's when you start getting through questions if you are worried oh i'm gonna get something wrong yes you're gonna get stuff wrong like you, you can get 90 percent of it wrong but the whole point of it you doing that is so you don't make the same mistake twice right like just make that mistake once you make that mistake you try either you get one pissed off that you've made a mistake and then you try figuring out why you did that and second you make sure that if you get it wrong the second time you get more pissed off i think reading things passively just doesn't make sense it's about the process you're not figuring something out you're not actively trying to un like you're not attacking it you know you're just passively like just reading information who knows where it goes it's you know it's gone so you want to just figure out a way to incorporate questions a lot of them in your study strategy i'm not saying completely drop your books but please incorporate questions and do 40 blocks and uh you know start putting that work in towards because that's the only way to finish it i mean if you leave you world for a little i think somebody wrote I think it's it's if you do 40 a day it takes 88 days but why would you want to put yourself in that position like if you start earlier you can get through the q bank and those are the type of questions that will come up not you know whatever you read is probably you know you're gonna remember all the big major points but you're not getting tested on major points you're getting tested on the nitty-gritty little little things that nobody knows about like glycoproteins or some weird stuff that nobody really cares about that's what you're getting tested on and you world does a great job of testing you on these absurdities and weird things that you won't remember so might as well just start doing the questions i also think it's very important to figure out like when i answer a question i always got questions wrong for example difference between cmv and ebv virus virus infectious questions like when you see a patient vignette one question for ebv and one question for cmv might look exactly the same and then you start going through the answer choices and you're like okay i was about to pick b but it, the answer was not b so what is b like that process of just like okay i picked the wrong answer but like why is it not the right answer and then you you're like okay you start coming up with reasons that okay i uh, should have looked for this like when i'm looking at ebv i should look for 
agglutin agglutination or i should look for a mon like the spot test for different things i should look for these signs for a heart failure i should look for s3 and there's so many ways where so many things that you learn extra even for the right answers like you should review your right answer and look at you know why did you get it right and what is the closest answer you were about to put because oftentimes when you do in, in the real exam situation you're down to like two answer choices and you really the only way to really master differentiating between answer choices is by doing practice questions that where you have experienced that and where you're down to two answer choices and you need to differentiate between the two the only way you're not going to get that by reading you're not going to get that by watching videos you're going to get that by literally doing questions fifth reason i didn't create a structure for reviewing i may i wrote i followed the dirty medicine way of doing things i mean this is like one of my notebooks i wrote everything out but i barely found time to actually review it and i think that cost me a lot and i think i what i sh what i should have done is if i did a 40 question bank i wrote down the main points from each question i should have the next day when i wake up i should have reviewed the 40 questions because if you try to read this 200 page notebook multiple i have another one somewhere if you try to read oh yeah here's another one here here's another so the, there's three of these if you try to read these you're not gonna get through them best way to do it is just do it as you go so you do 40 questions you write down what you need to write down the next morning you do you review what you wrote down the previous day i didn't really figure out how to review another thing that i wish i did was i wish i did anki for the portions that i'm weak in anki for like for amino glycosides i did do that for some things like but i wish i did more of that for example i think i did that for hemophilia hemophilia i suspended all the cards in the anking deck and then i just did hemophilia cards and i did i just did warfarin heparin cards coagulation cascade cards i wish i did um more um like uh, asthma drugs i always somehow confuse so many things like amino glycosides cephalosporins i wish i just did dedicated sessions of anki just on those topics because there's for there's like forty five thousand cards for anki you don't want to like you're not going to get through all of them unless you're like a super genius person I mean, you might honestly all of this information you might completely disregard it maybe you're a genius but i'm talking to people like me who have to put in double the effort for half the result and for people who have like short-term memory loss i'm talking to those people here people like me so no i wish i just did focus to anki cards instead of trying to do the deck same with U world i wish uh, so near the end what i did right before the exam which helped me was i took U world and i put i just selected biostat questions and i just did biostat questions and that helped a lot i just did i also did question blocks of just pharmacology and that helped so first doing random banks they help but then when you figure out where you're getting things wrong like pharma is always a, a sore point biostat questions there's like if you just drill your it's like doing a drill right if you just drill doing them and drill that in you um then you'll save a lot of headache and heartache when you get them right one major major thing i want to share with you i didn't do this early enough i didn't do this rapid review section is everything you need it's literally everything make an anki deck for this rapid review section i'm serious i wish i had done that i i found this out in the last three weeks it has all the associations it has all the like it doesn't even have pneumonics actually it just has all the associations and everything that is commonly tested and if i had just done the rapid review section i would have saved myself so many questions that come up that are ambiguous that are absurd it's in that rapid review section really i didn't i didn't do this and that's one of the mistakes is that i didn't look at the rapid review section quick enough if i could go back i would make an anki deck myself and 
try memorizing that section because a lot of questions come from just that section just completely that section alone will boost your mark and it will save you a lot of trouble number 10 dirty medicine i didn't do dirty medicine enough that man's youtube channel you need to go through like every single video there's so much high yield like all the ph stuff for pulmonary the ecg stuff nephrotic versus nephritic stuff there's even biostat stuff he helps you with his entire channel is a gold mine and i wish i found it earlier and i wish like i've watched i found it over the summer i wish i watched even more of his videos and i think i'm going to continue watching his videos throughout like my medical school journey because they're golden they're the absolute like he hasn't posted in five months and i'm scared but, but like i'm writing this man a check once i graduate like once i start working this guy is gonna get something i i'm gonna pay him something okay i can't afford his patreon i can't afford shit all right now but when i do i will literally post the check to him um incredible videos high value high yield shit his antipsychotic video his his video on antipsychotics his video on parkinson's drugs and his videos on antiarrhythmics bro some of the best videos i've ever seen in my life i'm not even joking you need to go and watch all of his videos if you're doing this what i would tell myself is that yes this exam is difficult yes this exam is very important for your applications but this exam is not more than your health you've made it this far you've written countless exams you're very smart Thousands of students do this exam every single year. Thousands of students pass. You can definitely do it. This exam at the end of the day is just an exam. So I wouldn't put this before my health. I would make a sustainable plan to do the exam. But please, you know, approach it with consideration. Approach it in, in, in a human way. I feel like if you put in the right amount of work, it's just about putting in the work. There's a lot of content. This exam is nothing impossible. You have been fine before the exam. And once you do the exam, you'll be fine right after it as well. And those are all the tips that I had to you. I've seen other people make other mistakes. Like some people make mistakes uh, where they ask around for all of their resources and as soon as somebody says that hey i'm doing this as a resource they drop the things that they were doing and then they pursue that a lot of other mistakes that i've seen but you know these ones in particular were the ones that i wish i didn't make and they i have personal experience <laughs> making these mistakes so i just wanted to share them i wanted to get them off my chest and if you are preparing for this monster this, this terrible exam um i wish you the best of luck and keep at it keep working hard and i'm sure you can do it i'm sure everybody you know thousands of kids do it every year again you have you're just as capable just do the exam um say that you're gonna do it and then do it even if i fail the exam i respect myself for saying that i'm gonna do the exam and i did it and that's what matters i think i can i can sleep easier at night knowing that i did something that i said i was going to do and uh, that helps me get through a lot of things so again if you made it this far in the video thank you for sticking around um please give me a follow on my instagram it's abdul r sayed that's where i'm most active S like subscribe you know what to do on youtube but i'll see you guys in the next video